Oh, you may hear the alarm in the background because I accidentally set it off again. So I'll just give that a minute. Uh, never at all moment, especially when you're going to begin a meditation course. <laughs> so Mondays are uh, primarily about the experiences of inspiration, invitation, and integration. And because we're just beginning today, uh, we don't really have much to integrate except a little bit from the kind of demonstration class we did last week. Um, so we'll begin uh, going into that. And the focus on most of today's practice will be on the invitation. Uh, and you'll see how that goes as we go into our practice. So depending on if you're standing or sitting, uh, I would encourage you, if you are sitting, though, to sit upright a little bit so that you can feel uh, your spine, uh, you know, in the sense of if it was tilting forward, back, left, or right, so that we can become uh, in touch with the experience of alignment. When we began the uh, class last time, and as we will for a while, the focus is going to be on learning to choose where our attention goes and in a way learning to choose how to actually explore our attention so one of the ways that really helps people with that is to find something interactive and because our focus is going to be on embodied spiritual practice the more we can make it something that happens within the, the way we feel our muscles our membranes our body our balance our breath the more our meditation and our experiences on something that's very tangible and something that's happening right now. So when I described this last week, I talked about the idea or the feeling of balancing a broomstick on your hand. So if you've ever had that experience, there's really no moment at which you're just sitting still, uh, you know, I mean, you may be thinking thoughts and doing things like that, but uh, in order to keep that broomstick balanced in your hand, you're always in an interactive relationship with the structure of the broom, the line up the middle of the, the handle, the weight of whatever shape the top has or the, the bristles have. So um, if you get really distracted or something, then the broom is going to fall over or you're going to have to really move around very fast and hopefully keep your balance. So we're going to take that idea and explore that more on the inside uh, of our body. And we do that with our spine. So one thing that can help with that is just to kind of let the body collapse a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. And then to come up to a kind of more, you might say, proud posture. And then a little bit of an arch in the back. Not, not very much, but just a little bit uh, forward and back until we're feeling a sense of um, a sense of balance and a sense of like holding that broomstick up with our hand. Now, if you can, you can choose if you want to keep your eyes closed or your eyes open, but we want to feel that little bit of a wobble. And it's in one way easy to hold yourself still, you know, almost, I wouldn't say like you're in the army, but in the sense of you're just staying still. And eventually we all get fairly still, but you could say in a fairly absolute sense, we're not really completely still. And the reason why I would encourage anyone to spend some time maybe wobbling a little bit is to make sure that we arrive in stillness and then maybe we get distracted and then we might arrive in stillness. And as you can see, I'm just moving around a little bit and then kind of coming into balance and then maybe moving around a little bit just to demonstrate that part of the practice. And as we feel that moving around and coming into stillness, we're ensuring a very important thing because holding yourself still uh, in any way that's really got to do with holding is very similar to a free state. And a free state, unfortunately, is attached to a lot of memories and often gives us a sense of dissociation instead of tangible interaction and presence. So, by allowing ourselves to have our posture uh, constantly moving towards stillness, or allowing at least a sense of movement within the stillness keeps our practice in the moment. And you'll notice as we're learning to breathe differently as we get to the breath work in a few minutes, 
um, if you're very aware of that broom handle, that balancing spine, when you're breathing in and out, the shape of your body changes a bit. So your center of gravity changes a bit. So your body actually is always moving. So it's, uh, in a way, a, a bit of a trick, in a way, a very obvious uh, way to interact. But it's also a very profound, very sensual way to stay in body as you move towards meditation. Also last week, I described the quality of being somewhat like a bat in the sense that as we occupy the space of the room around us, similar though to the way a bat makes a noise and creates sonar to you know, find food and not crash into everything, which is in a way amazing that animals can do that. Take a moment and you know, with or without, without making noises, it's up to you. <laughs> Does it just see with your eyes closed? Finding the stillness in your spine. If you can imagine what it would be like to send out a little sonar sound, a little beep, or not, but just to feel the walls, the furniture, the windows, the door. And sometimes when we think of things in, say, the indigenous sense within a, a medicine wheel or a circle, if you can just take a moment and just map out where the walls meet the floor all the way around you, or if you're outside, just imagine a circle around you. So although that room, the room you're in, the room I'm in is square, I can imagine its perimeter in a way like a circle, a continuous line going around me. This is what we, we call occupying space. So we're feeling our spine, feeling our breath, occupying space within the volume or the perimeter of the environment we're in. As you maybe wobble your spine and allow your partnership with gravity and alignment to move in a way towards stillness, but not held still, feeling the space around you. And give yourself permission to feel what's sacred in the space around you, or what could be sacred in the space around you. Part of that is actually coming to the center of your heart and choosing to feel into the sacred. And in another way, to think of your candle, pardon me, your heart, as if it's a candle and that radiant light, that love, that compassion, the patience, all things that connect to the, the experiences we call spiritual. We think of our heart somewhat like a candle filling that space with light. That's another way we connect with sacred space. So here we are sitting, finding balance in sacred space. And again, just like last time, now we wanna bring our attention inwards and notice all of the space within our bodies all the way down to your toes, into your fingers, tips of your ears, tips of your nose. Again, centered in the heart, but also welcoming the experience of sacred space within your body. So we can connect that space around us, that space within us, the center of the heart, the nature of sacred, both inward and outward. 
We can bring our awareness to our breath. And as we were doing last week, just bring your awareness to the bridge of the inside of your nose. Just feel the air passing. So your, felt, your body feel like a balloon as it fills up with air. Let the rubber elastic quality of the balloon to push the air out. And bring your awareness up into your sinuses. And I'll share a picture on the, I guess the Facebook page for the 49 days group. So you can see the inside of your sinuses, but it's actually about the size of a fist right behind your eyes. So as you're filling your nose, then fill your sinuses in that whole space. And notice the feeling of air passing from your nose, your sinuses, down the back of your throat. And how it fills your body. And then at a certain moment, your chest comes up a bit. Exhale, let your chest come down. The balloon pushes the air out. Just feeling the air passing through your nose and throat. Let's exhale all the way. Inhale, feeling your nose, sinuses, throat, filling your belly in the balloon. Chest comes up, chest comes down, belly empties. You just feel the air passing through. Balancing your spine. Surrounded by sacred space, filled on the inside with sacred space. So now we're going to just shift our awareness of our breath for a moment. And imagine that in, in some way, um, maybe not literally, but in some way, the inside of your body is like a well. And like all wells, depending on the season and rain and any other things, the amount of water will fill the well to the top, or it might empty the well down to the bottom. And to help us with that image and that sensation, we're to imagine there's a little leaf or something that uh, you enjoy holding your attention on, but it's floating on the water in that well. So as we inhale, we're still feeling the things that we felt. We just want to bring our awareness to filling the belly. And as we body slowly fills with breath, that little thing we're looking at, that leaf, raises up. And as we exhale, we can think the water emptying, the leaf falling. This is called floating and sinking. We inhale, and we're the one floating the leaf. And you don't have to move your hand like this. I'm just doing that to keep our awareness on that relationship. Sometimes it's good to breathe in fully. Exhale fully.
Now, depending on how much time you've spent in meditation or doing breath work, you might find um, four or five heartbeats. So I'll map that out. Exhale. Inhale. So for most people, five or six heartbeats is good. But once in a while, I'd encourage you to see if you can do a really filling breath and see if you can do it for eight seconds or heartbeats. So let's breathe all the way out. And then bring in, breathe in. Hold it for a sec and let it sink. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and then just hold it out for a sec. And then in. And then out. Now go back to five or six. Okay. So the next thing we're gonna bring our awareness to is the experience of coming into being, which we're doing right now. So as I speak for just a couple of minutes, allow your spine to wobble and come back to center. Feel the breath filling all the way through the body very sensually. Feel your leaf floating up and down. You can leave your eyes open or closed. I'm not going to be doing anything that interesting. I'll just be speaking of something. And it may actually help you <clears throat> in some ways uh, with your eyes closed just to feel some things. It's up to you. One of my favorite quotes comes from a philosopher from a long, long, long time ago, and I'm named Master Meister Eckhart. And he once said, all beings come into being in a state of being. Which in a way is kind of the most obvious thing you could say. So <laughs> go obvious wisdom. But what's being brought to our attention is if we're coming into a state of being, it kind of invites us to choose our state of being. If we're coming into being in a state of being um, by moving, by breathing, <clears throat> by maybe holding someone, by a, a thousand, thousand possibilities, we can shift our state of being a little bit. And this is where... The, the idea, the experience of state becomes very, very important to practice. Because most of us in modern life, most of us, I mean, there's writings that go back a thousand years in China that talk about people live in their stories too much. They can't find their state anymore. A thousand years ago, it was a dilemma. <laughs> so we all live in a way, a story. And that story, if it's a good story, brings good feelings. And if it's a hard story, it brings hard feelings. If we have a story, let's say, if it's hard and our feelings are hard, the story and the feelings are going to start producing a lot of sentiments, a lot of memories, uh, a certain sense that life is always going to feel hard because our story is hard. And our story looks at our feelings and says, hi, feelings, today feels hard. I guess I'll start thinking of more reasons why life is hard, why feelings are hard, why our sentiments and our memories focus on what is hard, maybe what is painful, <clears throat> what makes us sad, what makes us ne uh, nervous or anxious. And just like that leaf that floats up and down, our awareness 
floats up and down. Sometimes it's just running with a story, running with feelings and sentiments and memories. And it's running towards a solution. It's running away from pain. But if we remember that all beings come into being in a state, a state of being, and perhaps we have the opportunity to learn some practice. Just like that leaf that's floating, almost in a way like a helicopter that's landing. We have to give ourselves permission, maybe find connections and support and guidance to go through the feelings, the sentiments, the stories, the memories, and drop into the place where we're not feeling feelings with names anymore. We're just feeling the raw, innate, instinctual, deep emotion, deep mind that has no need to describe or know. Because what we're feeling and experiencing is. And it may not be comfortable. If we've been feeling this way for a long time, running, hiding, avoiding, drinking, just using the internet for distraction. That isn't going to bring us home. Because we're coming into being in a state. And just like that leaf, if we can come below the story, the sentiments, the kind of raw, basic emotions, down into deep, instinctual feelings, feelings that don't need a name anymore. Now we're feeling our beingness. And your beingness has naturally two ways of experiencing life. Back to our spine. Find your heart. Occupy space with the sacred. Occupy the inside of your body and being with the sacred. And now your beingness is your state, which can include any hard feelings. Now those hard feelings are being held in a sacred way. And with practice, you could say the amount of sacred beingness increases and the aversion we have to the difficult aspects of being the aversion becomes smaller. Our lives can be hard, but the volume, the amount of attention we keep on the hard parts begins to change when we remember that we come into being in a sacred way. And after a while, there's just a small amount of the difficulties and a vaster amount of our sacred beingness. And this is the truth of practice. Find your spine. Find your breath. Inhale and fill the whole room with your breath, your sacred, meaningful breath. Exhale, bring your awareness inwards, sinking down, coming into the center of who you are, the center of your beingness, centered in the sacred. So now we're going to uh, do some standing practice. And if you uh, had a chance to watch the uh, class we did last week, we're going to do similar exercises and add a few more details and a couple of other exercises. And again, I apologize for the small amount of chaos with the internet while not working at my house and the alarm going off and still waiting for the police to show up. So. <laughs> Never a dull moment in the center of a stillness meditation. Okay.